Okay, I just had to stop the video again to pick up that poop and unfortunately the pause uh, cut the video as well. So anyways, uh, this is part 3 of this video of uh, owning uh, Malamute and I was just talking about in the last video like how uh, like about his his teething issue. So when he was teething, basically I uh, I, I, I found it a bit frustrating when he was repeatedly damaging chair legs uh, by chewing onto them. Uh, didn't cause massive damage, but uh, he did. And uh, so what I what I what I found to be very effective was that I got him uh, like some pork bones. So uh, pork bones, um, like either raw or you can have them like blanched. It's fine. Just let him. Uh, just munch it and that will totally get him off uh, you know chewing stuff that he should not be chewing so uh, he would enjoy and look forward to the pork bones very much and nowadays I'm also doing a lot of Cantonese soups at home uh, I I will tend to to do like these uh, broth uh, soup broth and then pass him the bone afterward so uh, that's how I got around that problem and then now let's talk about the the toilet training thing because I know on the the top of a lot of people's mind is that you know I just don't want him to crap in the house so what are we going to do so uh, dogs are not too different from human uh, in the sense that uh, they also wouldn't want to spend their lives in a toilet so if they make the house uh, very stink with their poop um, it's more like they had to but not that they want to in a matter of choice. So once he uh, got slightly older, like uh, about six months, uh, about six months uh, in, six and a half, they're about. Um, if he wants to, if he wants to pee or if he wants to poo, uh, he would be very annoying, like repeatedly trying to uh, lick uh, our feet. Uh, he would bring his wet nose to to probe and and or lick our feet, and it was so annoying that we understood that it was his sign that he wants to get out of the house. And when once he does that, he would go out and uh, pee into the bushes or pee into you know like against the the gate railings or something like that. And uh, when he's done, um, like he also has his own thing, which is that. Uh, he would scratch the door. So, uh, we also had a big uh, thing about him like ruining the doors because uh, he was scratching the door for attention quite a bit. And sometimes, you know, when, he's punish when you're punishing him, you want to keep it outside the house. So, over time, and through punishment as well, like you remember the thing where I mentioned like, I punch him uh, from time to time to make him remember. So, um, when he knew that he should not be scratching the ground, uh, scratching the door, he would just uh, like tap the door once, literally, literally like knock like once, and then if we don't respond, he do it again. And then if we still don't respond, then you know he probably do two or three scratches with his nails. That's when it gets a bit annoying, and we definitely can hear it even from the second floor. So uh, that's with the uh, the dog training bit. Um, in terms of stamina, uh, it's only now where it's about nine months that. His stamina to go on uh, walks or uh, longer runs or on the kick scooter uh, is better because in the past he used to have. I, I think it was like a hydration issue. So due to hydration, he would tend to uh, like not want to proceed. He would try to sit on the ground, and and uh, now with his bigger size, obviously he stores more water, and he can keep going for longer as well. And uh, today is also like a, a humid day and just after the rain, so temperature is also nice. Um, one more thing that I, I wish to talk about uh, would be like on the the hydration bit as well. So um, I live in tropical Asia where it can also be sometimes very hot. Uh, like sometimes um, like I notice that he does not want to drink uh, as much water as he should. So you toss a bunch of ice cubes into his drinking bowl and that greatly helps. Okay, and uh, what else?
Um, okay, if you have two stories, I, I live in a two story house, and if I do, like, basically, he has never attempted, I mean, he's tried to go get onto the staircase, but he has never ever, like, made his way all the way upstairs. I, I'm very sure that he. He can if he if we didn't say anything about it, but because we stop him, uh, then you know he he kind of remembers. So, for example, uh, okay. Do, oh, uh, like uh, one of the things we we did with regards to going upstairs is like we would kind of uh, maintain a tone of voice, like we're punishing him. So when we punish him, there's a very firm tone of voice. And he knows that he's doing something wrong, and and he knows that he's being watched. And and I would bring on the thing. Do you want me to punch you? And then he would Im- immediately just stop. So uh, before he was able to learn that himself, to not go up the stairs, to remain on the the first floor, um, we actually did hire a dog trainer, but just for three sessions uh, to get some general advice and to. To get some basic uh, obedience training, uh, which didn't involve violence, but uh, it was more like uh, rewarding for the correct behaviors. So uh, the the trainer he did mention that one of the techniques is to use like uh, a collar. Uh, a collar they will either send a current or a constriction, more like a constriction. There are two types: there's a constricting collar and the electrocuting collar. Obviously, the constricting is better than the other one. So it's like, you know, if you don't want them to go up on the dining table, uh, then you press a button and then it will constrict. So they'd be thinking, oh shit, there's the evil spirit somewhere. And every time that spirit will haunt me with a, a bit of a strangulation uh, when I'm doing something wrong. So therefore, that's going to deter him from doing the things that you don't want. Uh, the trainer has even mentioned that let's say if we want him to stay within the boundaries of the house without going beyond the gate if we want to, we can even train that using such a collar uh, or to keep him from going up the staircase. So all these are things that we can do uh, with a collar. You just press a button. Uh, and and if, you, if, if that sounds interesting to you, uh, I will find uh, something similar and, and, and put a link below in the video description so you know exactly what I'm looking out for uh, what exactly I'm, I'm talking about and you'll be able to you'll be able to get the same kind of collar that's suitable for such purposes oh that by the way is the the husky that that I was the first to say uh, hi to him and his first acquaintance in the neighborhood and made uh, his his time like much much easier uh, to bear and then he became very friendly from an early stage uh, thanks to that husky over there okay um, I think this pretty much concludes uh, my video series so to speak originally intended only to be like a video but due to due to a uh, phone call that came in also because I had to pick up his dog poop uh, you know I had to make like three parts of this but if there's any issue in the ownership, uh, maintenance of a husky that you would that you would like uh, to ask that I did not cover, you're most welcome to type in the comments. And in case you found this video first and not part two or part one, I highly recommend that you watch those ones as well, because uh, I, I shared a bunch of uh, different things that I wanted to share in. Uh, that people may want to know about uh, having an Alaskan Malamute as a pet. Uh, final note: Well, if you live with, uh, if you if you if you have a family of your own, um, you know, include include the dog in all your activities. Like if you have, uh, you know, like a truck or something, you know, let them let them tag along with you for your family activities, whether it's camping or what. Uh, uh, well, it would have to be gated ca- camping uh, in the beginning phase, unless you want to wander off. But, uh, but I, be, what I basically meant to say is that you know, just 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 uh, treat them as a family member, and uh, they they love that kind of thing, and uh, they also learn very fast. They are extremely affectionate, 
that they knew who's from the family who isn't. Uh, and and yeah, one last bit that I forgot to mention in the very first video of the series is that uh, his origins, uh, well basically uh, he, he's imported from a, a breeding farm in, in a part of China which has like the snow season. So uh, he, his parents uh, and himself uh, grew up, I mean his parents are in China and and he grew up in a in a in a very cool climate, and for whatever reason, um, the person I I, I mean the, the the farm that I bought him from said that they used to breed these dogs locally here in Asia, but they stopped because they found that when they breed them locally, uh, the coat uh, and the size just doesn't turn out to be that good. So. Uh, they've been breeding them uh, in China this whole time and just importing them over. Okay, so I I hope this video gives you uh, these videos give you a good idea. And uh, again, you're welcome to ask any questions that you may have on owning an Alaskan Malamute uh, down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. And in case. You may be in into some of the other things that I'm doing as well. You're welcome to explore my YouTube channel.